Hello everybody, welcome back to Reaper Minis TV. We're going to start off this episode of reviews with sort of jumping to dessert first. This is the my favorite figure out of this episode's batch, and I'm going to jump right to it first. So here we've got the Bethalian drone. It's a multi-piece miniature, and you can see the bulk of it is the body and part of the head. It's got a bony structure on the back and some tentacles in front, and then the head itself has some tentacles coming off of it. It's very has a very Cthuloid appearance to it and the head is going to fit on the top sort of like this and it's just really evocative of Call of Cthulhu in my mind so immediately work in that kind of setting and then you've got two arms fit on either side not a whole lot of problem with getting them into place they just fit on right at the shoulders and you have some posability here. They can rotate around the, the joint where they come together. And then here's the other arm. Break it off the tab. And that's going to fit into place here. And then you've got these two claw-like pieces. And they bust off of the tab pretty easily. Here's one of them. And they go into place down on the side or in the mid-torso area. And... I suppose you could put them on in either direction with the longest one at the top or the bottom, just whichever way you put them on. So pretty easy assembly, but a really stunning looking figure once it's all together and ready to prime and paint. Now here's the assembled figure. This is just a quick assembly. I'm going to pull it apart later and redo it after I clean it up. But you can see it goes together pretty easily and it just it looks magnificent. I love the figure. It's, like I said earlier, my favorite out of this batch, and I think you have a lot of uses for it. You could very obviously use it in a Call of Cthulhu game. It just has that aura or appearance to it. I think you could drop it into d and You could drop it into Warhammer. You could drop it into Pathfinder, any kind of fantasy role-playing game. I'm even thinking about dropping him in as a sorcerer for my Warriors of Chaos army that I'm building using Metal Reaper figures. So, I think there's just tons of uses. You could even drop it into a sci-fi game, which is probably, as a Bethalian, its intended use from Reaper. Sci-fi game, superhero game, whatever. I think there's a ton of uses for the figure. I love it. It's great. Uh, go check it out. Next up, we have an addition to the Dark Reach army for Warlord, and that's the Dark Elf faction. So you know I'm going to like the figure almost immediately, but taking a look at her, you'll see there's multiple pieces that go into making up the model. There's the base figure itself, and she's got a big pointed hat on and the flowing sort of tattered robes that you normally see in Dark Reach models. And of the other pieces, you get two shoulder plates, one large piece of a headdress that goes on the back of the figure, and also a two-handed sword that she's holding in front of her. The headdress piece is sort of a combination of her flowing hair that's been tied back, and also a bit of adornment or jewelry, or just a big exaggerated, almost looks like a big exaggerated brooch that fits on the back of her head. And that goes into place pretty easily. It leaves a gap between the back of the model and the rest of the headpiece. The shoulder plates go on easily enough, and the sword also goes on without really much of a problem at all. Now the sword does obstruct a little bit of the detail on the front of the model and like other Dark Reach models there's a lot of intricate little filigree here and there on the model. So you might want to at least consider painting all the, the parts or at least painting the sword separate from the rest of the model and then gluing it into place just to make sure you get all the little bits of detail painted properly and you don't obstruct anything or obscure it. Here we have a trio of Lizardmen warriors and these are very much in the style of old-school D&D, at least in my mind they are. They're quite different from the Reptus Lizardmen that are in the Warlord range. And you get one that's got a wooden bow and he's drawing an arrow out of a quiver. The second one has a bone that's being used for a club, looks like a leg bone. And he's also got a shield that looks like it's made out of a shell. And then the third one has a spear along with what looks like a tortoise shell that he's using for a shield. Now, I personally prefer the Lizardmen and the Reptus line for Warlord, but these guys do have sort of a nostalgic retro feel to them, and they would be fine as the starting or the beginning of a Lizardman encounter for a D&D game. Okay, on to some Chronoscope miniatures now, and this first one is Sheila Silver, and she's billed as being a cowgirl, but she really reminds me more of 
David Spade's girlfriend, at least in the early part of the movie, uh, of the movie Lost and Found. So she reminds me of a stripper cowgirl kind of girl, I guess. Now, she's carrying a pistol in one hand and has her little hobby horse in the other hand. Fairly typical, well, typical for a stripper cowgirl, I guess. I don't know that you'd have a lot of cowgirls wearing the kind of getup that she has on, but maybe I don't know too much about cowgirls. Uh, but anyway, details are good. I'm just not exactly sure what I would use her for or where I'd drop her into a game. Maybe in a modern game or in a post-apocalyptic zombie holocaust game where she's a survivor along with the zombie strippers from a previous episode that weren't so lucky when everything kind of went to hell. But I think that's probably where you'd get the most use out of her. Here we have the Black Mist and he's a vigilante and this is a single piece miniature that is carrying two what look like 45 pistols, one in each hand. He's got a wide brimmed hat on and a cloak and a mask covering part of his face. Very reminiscent of The Shadow. Not a bad movie, by the way. Um, but that's what he reminds me of. So I think dropping him into a pulp game, maybe a low-powered superhero game, even a Call of Cthulhu game as an investigator, I think he'd do really well in that. But very cool-looking model. There was a visible mold line on the cape that needs to be scraped away or smoothed out, but it's on a relatively flat part, so really not a big deal there. I like the pose of the model, I like how it's sculpted with a little bit of animation to it where it looks like there's a gust of wind that's blowing up his cape. So, very cool model, I like it a whole lot and we'll probably have a good use for it. Next up we have a blister that contains some cyborg parts and you get eight pieces in the blister and all of these pieces come from various other Reaper models. You've got uh, the blaster and the fist from the cyborg hero Slade. You've got the steam-powered fist from Decker Lugstamp, the steampunk hero. There's a mechanical pincher from Jeeves, the clockwork robot. And then two arms and two legs from the Cyber Reavers. So you really don't have enough parts in here to make a complete model or a complete single model of anything. But you have a bunch of pieces in here where you could put additions or customizations onto a whole bunch of different figures. You could use a bunch of these pieces for miniatures in a Death Watch campaign or Rogue Trader campaign where you have guys with bionic parts or things like that. You could even use it to modify a bunch of different figures for a superhero game. So while you do need some specific uses for the parts in this blister, you probably can get a lot of use out of it if you're into customization and making modifications to your figures. Here we have an alien parasite and host. This comes in two pieces and the bulk of the miniature is the guy who is the host of the parasite and he's kind of flailing backwards as it's bursting or about to burst out of his chest when you see it put together and he looks like a pretty normal guy with a baseball cap on, a t-shirt, and a pair of jeans except for the alien parasite that's bursting through his chest and if this is reminiscent of the movie Alien where you've got the chest burster uh, in that movie that, that's pretty much what I was thinking and I think what they're going for here the little spiky alien thing glues into place pretty easily, not really much of an issue there, and he's going to be ready to paint in no time. There were some mold lines that needed to be cleaned up, but really not a whole lot of cleaning here, maybe a minute or so of work before he's ready to be based and primed and painted. Alright everybody, that's it for this episode of Reaper Minis TV. We'll see you next time.